Hey party people, welcome back to Solo Chat. And I'm always excited to do this because I get to bring my opinions to you, show you some solo games, tell you how I feel about them, good, bad, or ugly, talk about some topics that are solo specific, not crowdfunding specific. It's whatever the hell I want to talk to you about. <laughs> we can just talk about games, uh, as many games as I can possibly fit into a, uh, you know, kind of a manageable time uh, so we can get through this stuff. So today I'm going to be covering several things. Uh, we're going to be talking about Essen. I was at Essen for a couple days there. I was at the, well, for the whole thing, a couple days. Uh, Essen, Germany. And then also we're going to talk about two games today. We're going to talk about Apiary. And we're also going to talk about Terraforming Mars, the dice game. We'll get to those later. I'm going to give you my full on opinion of both. Uh, you'll know how I feel about those. And finally, we'll close it out with our topic. The topic is going to be some of my favorite solo and cooperative content creators. Uh, the reason why I want to do that is just to kind of give a shout out to some of the people that I watch. And I watch a lot uh, of different kind of content creators. But definitely give these people a look. Some of them you, will you definitely will know. Some of you won't know. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. First thing I want to talk about is Essen. So Essen is in Essen, Germany. Uh, it is a fair uh, where you are, you know, basically it's like Gen Con or Origins Game Fair. This is a big, big convention. And when I say big, I mean like it is the big convention. So picture Gen Con times two and a half. So they, you know, like we're talking 193,000 people, I believe, that weekend, that weekend, that's nuts. And they, apparently they opened up the lanes and it still, it still ended up being not enough room. It just was crazy. I mean, like I think at Gen Con, it's like you're literally like allowing people, I, I bet you if you didn't move your feet at uh, Essen and you just let people move you, you would just kind of make it to the end of a row. It was that tight. It was that tight on Thursday. It was crazy. Uh, but I did see some games that you can play solo and cooperative. And I actually got to play some. One of them I got to play with Michael King, if you do not know uh, of Michael King. He, uh, he makes content as well. Definitely want to check his stuff out. Uh, Michael King was dice chunking it with me. Uh, well, I shouldn't say just dice chunking it with me, but we were playing some strategy. Uh, we played Dante, which is coming from, uh, what is it called? Creative Game Studio, CGS. Um, they are the makers of Chronicles of Juniger, and this is their follow-up. This is another big, big narrative game. And of course, if you know lore of Dante, so we're dealing with demons, hell, all these different types of stories. Uh, but you're going to have like a kind of a card based uh, over top world kind of thing going on that will affect different things that are going on in the story as you go along. And also your battles, some of the final results of your battles will also change the interactions that are going on down, at, um, down the line. There's some battles you don't even have to win. You just convince the other person to do things. But it does have a kind of a K KDM type of uh, uh, kind of attack deck. And it's really, really easy to understand. But for you, you have uh, basically a, a kind of a stamina system with your cards. And uh, you're, playing these, you're, you're playing your cards. And the thing is, you can actually play them out of order. So nobody's really set like, here is my turn. I'm playing my cards on my turn. It's more so like, hey, I'm playing this card to do this action. Then we're going to get in position. And I'm going to shoot this guy. Um, then I'm going to take, <laughs> literally, I'm going to take this chair and throw it at that person. Uh, you know, like all kinds of stuff. I'm going I'm to knock this pillar down and throw it at the boss you know and the boss will pick you up and hold you and throw you at your your, your uh, partners it's got that kind of epicness to it uh, and it's got that kind of chaos to it but I and really enjoyed the interaction between us and you get to chuck a crap ton of dice if you're if you're a dice person yeah the dice is on okay <laughs> the dice is on I mean it's it's got that uh, massive darkness kind of feeling when you start to get those dice because you're getting buffs off other people. Some characters are really just support characters and they're helping you get to your dice. They're helping you amp up your attacks. Some people are just straight brawlers. It, it, you get that good feeling of how um, characters interact with each other across the table. It's a very table talkish game. Uh, and that was very exciting because of course, typically I'm a solo player, uh, but this one I, I would actually play with the game group and I think they would enjoy it because the narrative is, it's, it's short enough and long enough for the person who likes the, likes the narrative and it's short enough for the people who don't want to read four pages and then make one choice then have a long setup. This is not like this. It's very, very quick. It's got 3D stuff going on. So you got the, you got the three, uh, 
you got the 3D kind of terrain just like you would in Chronicles of Drunagar, and you're using those four advantages as well. We fought like in a king room. It was pretty crazy. That, that, it was pretty crazy. Uh, and there's actually a way that we had our scenario where it played out where someone interrupted the scenario, and then like she was kind of a distraction, but then we like did something where it, it kind of ended the battle and we didn't even kill the guy. So it was pretty interesting there. Uh, you definitely want to check that out. And yeah, I'm playing with Michael King, great guy. Um, it, you know, like sometimes people, <laughs> some people are different in person and uh, he wasn't really different in person. He's exactly what I would expect in person. Uh, really, really nice guy. Um, and we had a lot of fun together. <laughs> we had a lot of fun together, chucking dice, having a good time. I love to have fun with other people. So that was great. I actually play with another content creator. I can't remember their name, uh, but they are also well known. I just don't know who they were. Another game that I played uh, that was Solo Up Bowl is uh, Nanolith. And Nanolith was also a kind of a cult hit. Um, kind of a, a cult hit type game that came on crowdfunding and I believe you can still pledge for it now um, that game was also really slick interesting systems that you use with dice to support each other um, I can't really necessarily remember all the details but what I felt like when I was playing that game was it felt like Mass Effect it actually felt like Mass Effect um, and it does play on a book so if you like Jaws of the Lion type stuff that's going to be there but there are a lot of choices and things that were happening between scenarios with cards and things you may have unlocked because you did certain things within a scenario. That was the interesting look into how that one was applied. Um, I, I thought that was pretty different. Now, I would take a look at that page um, and I, that price was like right on the borderline for should I, should I late pleasure or not. It was right on the borderline, but after playing it, I'm going to have to watch a little bit more gameplay, reflect on it again, and maybe consider back in that one, I, the late back in that one. That's actually one that I would seriously take a look at. Dante, um, it's down the line and we'll see how it goes, but I'm generally typically impressed with their stuff. I should say I was in Chronicles of Drunagar. So that, that does have me, you know, I have some affiliation with it. But if the game's good, it's good. If it stinks, it stinks. We never know what these prototypes are like. I'll, I'll probably do some coverage on it when it comes. But those are just two of the, uh, the two of the Essen games that I, I played. Those are cooperative type games. But there were some that I picked up that, were, that are solo that I'm excited about. Apiary was one of them. I have Evenfall. I have the... Uh, I believe Pirates, Pirates of Maracaibo is one as well. Gull Packs just arrived. Satori I did some solo coverage on for the last episode. I believe Sweet Mess has some things. Zoo Tycoon I bought for solo. Aborea I bought for solo. So there's a lot of different things that I can cover. Uh, and there's a game called Jin, which I thought was the sleeper hit of the show. But I will tell you how I feel about it on another episode. Played it last week. Played it this week. Hey man, they can't all be that great, okay? Right? They're not all that great. Uh, some are good, some are okay, some are bad, all right? So we have, to, we have to make sure we make that clear. We'll talk about that one a little bit later. But I don't want to hold anything off anymore. There's a lot to talk about in this episode. Let's get into our first review, and that is Terraforming Mars, the dice game. Terraforming Mars, the dice game. Yeah, so... I have kind of a checker pass with just Terraforming Mars as a nutshell, but I try to give every game a fair chance and start with Terraforming Mars, which I'm sure most of you know me from the 10 games I hate. Uh, thank you. That's like three years ago. And by the way, if you comment on there every year, every year, I go on there one time and I respond to the comments on there. I don't know if that's like the most commented video, on, but I go on there and I respond to comments just once a year. I don't know why. It was like a big thing for me. But anyway, it's just a big thing. Shout out to Tom Vassell forever, forever. Um, so basically, I'm down to this point where I've played the card game. I like the card game. Definitely like the card game. I might, I might get the expansion for that, by the way. The card game is on point. Works for me. Solo was quick. I like that. Here we are with the dice game. So the dice game, you're chucking dice, trying to create the cards, and then you're also trying to create three objectives. So let's go ahead and just dive into this. It's about 30, you know, 30 minute or so game. It's pretty quick, uh, but we'll talk about it. So you are 
basically, uh, you know, corporations, you got all these cards, there's about 20 or, 20 or so uh, different factions or whatnot, but they're really just different starting setups. You get like these tokens here, which are every resource. You get a set of dice pool here, uh, and you get your starting dice pool, and then you get a bonus card, and there's several bonus cards as well. You'll choose one of them, and they create your dice pool for when you do production. So this will get bigger and bigger as it goes along. Anytime you see that brown box, you could potentially get another dice when you take a production action, things of that nature. So as you can see, there are different types of cards. Uh, you have the blue card, which you can use as an action when it comes time. You have instant cards, and then the green cards, which contribute, once again, they contribute to here. But what do we do on our turn? What are we trying to do? We are trying to terraform Mars, okay? So we're trying to get the oxygen up. We're also trying to raise the degrees all the way up. And then we're also trying to put all these lakes out here. And as we put lakes out here, we're gonna get uh, the dice. We're gonna get dice. We're gonna be able to manipulate our dice get victory points, things of that nature, even other cards. We also have these different uh, goals out here. So these, these points are awarded according to how many of the icon you have that matches this. So if I have a bunch of cards that match uh, this C here, then I get points at the end of the game. Uh, we also have these goals. So if I have 12 cards, I get points. If I have seven, I, th I think it's four, right? Um, if I have seven of uh, one di die type, I get points. If I have 16 points, I believe, I get 16 points at the end of the game, then I get points as well. Um, I didn't I actually didn't use these in my game. That's why I'm trying to like remember these off the top of my head. But in a solo game, you get 50 turns to do this, and then some of them go away when you get to these bullet points. What you're doing on your turn, you have two choices. A production turn, where you're basically refreshing everything, and then you also have uh, the choice to do a support and an actual main action. So support and main action go like this. You have your support car. They have a really good kind of layout here for your cards so you know what the heck you're doing in this game. Uh, so you have support actions. One, you can just grab another die, roll it with the other die. So first thing you do is roll your die, folks. Okay, so you roll your die. Then you can grab another die if you want uh, as one of your support actions. You only get one in the game, uh, one in that round uh, of play. Or you can turn in one of your your die, which are resources, to manipulate another die to a face that you want. And then finally, you can get rid of a uh, die to get two cards, okay? So you have that. Then you do one of those, you do one of those, and then you have a main action. Now I'm looking at my cards. I don't even have a gold die, so I'm just gonna roll that, see what I get, okay. So now we move on to our main actions. Well, we're gonna be trying to make sets of things. The more sets of things we make, like if we make sets of, uh, of money, then we get our money up. If we make sets of, of city, then we get to put a city out. Cities will get you points, victory points, and also for adjacency rules, they'll give you additional. You have the uh, four plants. The four plants will give you the biomes. Biomes adjacent to cities give you points. You have your water. Water's next to, I think water's next to forest gives you points. So you have all these different ways of scoring points and then you have your degrees those go up you get points as well but you also have the option of doing more support actions and that's something that you typically will do because this is a heavy dice mitigation game you are trying to do as many mitigations as possible although you do have these tokens that represent the resources that you may be missing so basically here we are we're going to take a quick turn or two so i can show you how this goes i don't have anything straight up it doesn't look like i do um, i may need a city it looks like i have this one right here and this will add to my engine so i'm I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take, it looks like I got this, I got the O2. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this die, take a support action, and then I'm going to change this to this right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and spin that, uh, spin that to get this card. It will become part of my, uh, it'll become part of my little tableau here for when I do a production action. And maybe I didn't want to do that. Maybe I wanted to keep those dice and spin this instead. That's something I could do. But I just wanted to show you how quick that can go. Then I may have to do a production round because I don't have, I have too many dice. Let's say I did have a lot of dice and I have nothing I can really do with those. What I would do is I would take a production turn. I have to go down to three dice, discard as many cards as I possibly want. Okay, and then I can go back up to five cards. Okay, like that. Take production from here. So I take these, take the dice that match this. Roll my dice. 
I'm back at it. So I'll do like that. Now I'm back at it. I'm looking at things here. Looks like I don't have uh, some of the things I need here. Looks like I have two stars, but I don't have, oh, I got a globe. Why don't we go for another roll here of the die? And I needed this to be a specific thing here. So it looks like I was trying to go for this, 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 and in order to get this, I can take another support action. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this resource die to flip it over here and whatnot. So then I'll take this, these go away. And now I have even more dice I have access to. And now that would be my turn. We keep going down on turns, by the way. And could I spend more? I could spend more of these. I could uh, if I was in a pinch, but it doesn't look like I can do much here. So we're gonna go ahead and roll our dice next turn here. So we just keep doing this until we get to the end of the game. We're trying to make sure we do this within 50 turns. We're trying to score points as we go along. Adding things, like I said, if we add on top of here, we get those those, th those rewards. You may add cities. There's even special things that you can add on here that may give you points for having adjacency rules. But typically this is the theme of Terraforming Mars, just squeeze down to a dice game. Uh, and the dice game, that's 30 minutes. I would think the card game is like 40 minutes, 40, 45 to minutes to an hour if you're really playing it slow. But this one here really hits that 30 minute mark. So how do I feel about this game? I don't like it at all. I really don't. Um, I started it, started playing it, and I stopped several times. I played, I took a break. I was like, maybe I'm just tired. And then I played it again, and then I played a little bit beforehand, and I was just like, you know what? I don't like this game. <laughs> I don't like this game. So why? You uh, So Terraforming Mars is a little bit closer to the games I would even like, right? Uh, I love the card play. It's a card game. This, the, uh, the actual uh, Terraforming Mars, the card game. Card game. This one here, I'm just rolling dice and just lucking it out, okay? Mitigate dice, I don't have it. Roll again, keep rolling. Lose a turn. It's basically, I felt like I'm losing a turn. Even though you get these little, these little pieces here, uh, you get these little pieces here that represent the things that you're missing, and you can just chuck that and do whatever, that doesn't feel good. It just feels like a way of getting out of the strategy of the game. It doesn't necessarily make you feel excited about what you're doing. I just feel like I'm mitigating and then moving on, mitigating, moving on, mitigating, moving on. That's why it's fast. Fast is attractive. It sounds fast. It's like, what if I could play Terraforming Mars in like 30 minutes? That'd be great. And, and like, <laughs> I feel like that's what this game is saying. It's like, what if you could play 30, you know, 25 minutes, 30, you know, 45, 30, no, 25 minutes, you know? That's what I think this game is trying to do, and I think it misses when it does that. Uh, there are a lot of options. You have so many of these tiles that you can, these, these scoring tiles that you can get. Just by having the, dom uh, the combination of these dice up here, you're gonna be able to score points differently. Just by having the different factions, you'll have different starting points. Just by having these different bonuses, you have different starting points with the bonuses. It's just that when I see this, I feel like this is like some kind of squeeze down version that I don't, it's not like it, does, it, it needs more bacon in the oven. I just don't feel like this is a proper representation of what Terraforming Mars is. It's not as exciting. It doesn't feel like you feel smart when you're doing things. You're just kind of going through an exercise of uh, learning the game and just playing around and trying to manipulate the dice one more time or insert something here. And I've done the Terraforming Mars like thing. That's really all I gotta say about it. I think you get a gist of how I feel about it, but what is my score? I think this is an average game at best. I'm gonna give this one a five out of 10. I don't necessarily feel safe recommending this one. I feel like you have the car game. I think that's better. If you feel like you like the Terraforming Mars game, of course, that would be best for you. Um, as we move further and further and condensing these designs down, sometimes you got to skip one of them. This one right here, the dice game. This reminds me of Istanbul, the dice game. It's like, I like Istanbul. I don't need like a roll and write. I don't need a dice game. <laughs> I need the game. And if this is where we're going, I will hard pass on this one. So uh, this one will not be staying in my collection and I cannot recommend it. Five out of 10. Let's move on to Apiary. Space Bees, folks. Apiary. Stonemeyer Games. Now, as I come back from Essen, I'm going to have a bunch of these types of games where you know about them, you may have heard of them. Some of them would be a year out, some of them would be like three, four months out after they become out of the, you know, like, hey, where did this game come out of nowhere? Why is everybody talking about this game all of a sudden? There's that little bit of hotness coming at right, right before Essen, then Essen happens in the release, and then all of a sudden, 
most of these games you'll forget about or you don't have them the next year uh, right here sign me up about 40 games from last year i think i have like five or seven of them something like that five to seven of them uh so you know you got to watch it i was better this year by the way leave me alone i was better this year uh, <laughs> i was better this year tisk tisk though to my account uh, but yeah you pick up these games at s and you hope they stick well this one's actually coming out really soon i believe the pre-orders are done and what whatnot i was sent a copy of apiary and i'll be honest with you i hesitated i usually um, pre-order every single stonemeyer game because i have belief in their designs, although I did not keep one of those games. Uh, you've even may have heard of the wingspan thing. I'm going, I'm talking a lot about Dice Tower. I'm being really reflective right now about that moment uh, in time. And like I said, every year I, I uh, go in the comments and check that out and kind of respond to them. But Stonemeyer is one of those games where it's just so iffy for me. And I usually get real hot about them and then cool off super fast, okay? So Expeditions is the first one that did not cool off for me. So here I am with Apiary. The publisher sent me this copy. I bought that one. Uh, this one here, they gave me the copy at Essen, actually. I'm sorry. Uh, and I was very, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. So I'm going to give you a little bit of my impressions of this game, show you how it works, and more, more importantly, show you how the automa system works because that is what stonemeyer uh, is most known for is the use of automa factory let's just dig in real quick and talk about the game thematically speaking we are talking about space bees okay space bees taking over okay um gonna have to sell me on it right I'm not going to tell you I'm sold on it either, but that's okay. We can get, we can get past that. We can just play the game because I'll be honest with you. My take on fantasy stuff or like sci-fi or whatever, you can make up whatever world you want. But if you're going to use bees, then I expect bee stuff, right? So let's just go and see if you can see the bee stuff as we move along. All right. So you're going to start with your, like your ship and your ship. They're going to be different ships in the game. As a matter of fact, there's hard ships and easy ships and whatnot. They all have different shapes and different benefits that they give. They're kind of based on a difficulty thing or whatnot. Then you got a good 20 or different faction tiles that will give you different setups and different abilities. And they upgrade on the other side as well. But ultimately you're trying to expand this so that you also have uh, different types of resources. And you're also going to get those from the tile and you're you're going to get benefits as you cover these but you're also going to get uh, points if you fill this up and you can even add ship pieces to this uh, from different actions and then you can expand that and if you fill that you get points as well so that's just kind of the idea of what's going on here uh, so this game uh, you have these worker bees and then the automa has their worker bees and they all have these numbers on them so you can look at this here it's got numbers like one two three and four on here and you're going to be placing them out in these different spots here on here and there are even spots that have two two spaces on here and we'll talk about that so i'm just going to kind of take a quick tour of the board give you an idea of what's going on in each each one of them so the first one you have is explore and whatever the number is on there that's the power of the action so it says two on there i can move one two not in, uh, orthogonally and then wherever i stop i take that item uh, i take that i put it over here and i also get that item but here's the cool part so then i take this i flip this over and then I get, I get any resource and I get to put a resource on there, a basic one, and I get that resource too. So I could potentially get this and this if I had room for it, right? So I can put this here and I can put this here. Okay. So now if anybody ever goes back there, they get that resource. Now let's say the AI, it's the AI's turn. So now it is the AI's turn. What we do is we take this deck. It's got a, a deck that shows you one, the interaction of what, what color worker it's going to be. It's got kind of a decide what order things are going to be in. So for example, if it was a yellow, I flip this over and let's just kind of simulate what the turn is here. We take the cards, flip this over and it would say, Hey, this is yellow and gray and you use yellow and gray. I'll tell you right now, minus five to this game right away. I use yellow. I am the yellow player origin of the yellow player. If you follow me on Facebook, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yellow sweatshirts. I figured out the origin of my yellow player life, okay? So the fact that Stonemeyer Games chose yellow minus five, okay? I'm actually gonna take 0.5 off of that. We don't give half points here. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. So the Otoma is gonna flip this card over and it's gonna have one part that says, hey, use this color or that color. If there are zero, one, or two workers of that color, then they retrieve. And what retrieve is, is you take your worker back 
And if it's bumped or it gets retrieved, we take this and we move it up. We move it up. And whenever it gets to four, when it comes back, it will actually go away. It'll hibernate. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But for right now, all you need to do need to know is that the AI is going to look at these colors. It's a yellow color. It's not going to, uh, it, there's no zero of it. If there was zero, it will retrieve those from the back of the, uh, from the board. But we're going to look at, it says advance. And advance is an action uh, where we would take the highest number of this one here and we put it on here. Now what happens here is it gives you a plus one to this action. So it's giving you a total of four to this action. You can choose one of these. These, these tiles right here, they go on here and they give you extra spots to uh, place things on. I'm just going to place a couple on here and show you so when we get to that part, that portion. But it's going to give you opportunities to expand your uh, to expand your ship. And then these ones here, the blue ones, are going to give you different actions that uh, certain things happen. So whenever you gain something or whenever you take an explore action, you get an extra resource. Or whenever you retrieve, you're going to be able to get an opportunity to, uh, to get these abilities, uh, get uh, different different extra abilities. Also, your each character, I mean, each uh, faction has their own abilities. These are gonna be instant actions and they are very powerful. Uh, they're also gonna take up spots on here as well. So you really start to run out of real estate as you add things on here. That's one of those choices here. And as you can see, like I said, the different factions are gonna give you different sets of choices as you go along. So that's just kind of what's going on in here. But ultimately, let's just say we were like this, okay? and I move in and I bump them, okay? So now this goes down here and this one comes off. What happens to this worker is it goes up and this goes for anybody. I can bump my own character, my own player out of there, it goes up. And the bumping, you can decide if it goes up or you can put it down here in your landing area and wait for the retrieval. You're trying to, you're trying to time this stuff out because you don't necessarily want to get rid of workers. Otherwise, you do have to go and take a grow action. Uh, and you also have to wait strategically to get a, to a certain level sometimes. You got to bring these guys back in weak, so you don't necessarily want to do that all the time. But this is one of the ways that you get stuff back in the game. You also have these cards, these research cards, which will give you... Um, give you some benefits. They can be a resource, an action, or they can be an in-game action. And if you time it properly with the most powerful worker, so if the worker is a four, a level four, you get better versions of these actions and points. You'll, you'll be able to plant these cards and then they become in-game cards. But most of the time people will play this right here. It says, you know, play one of these pollen here to gain a, a level one worker. And that means you can, you know, grab one of your workers from the extra ones from here and do it. So this is one of those ways to kind of keep the game going, making it interesting on off turns because now you can start to pay attention to what am I going to possibly use these cards for? Will I use it for one resource? Will I use it for its ability? And also, will I use it to plant cards here? Or as I expand things, maybe I'm starting to pay attention to how I expand. There's even benefits for uh, there's even benefits for covering this as well, like I alluded to before. But ultimately, when you're ready to, you're going to retrieve your workers. When you retrieve your workers, they all go up by one as they come off. But and they don't come as they come off. It's really when they go back over here. But I just do this ahead of time. Uh, I just do this ahead of time and put them back on here. But depending on how many workers you retrieve, you can activate your green tile. So like this right here, I automatically get a green. And this one, I automatically can choose between that and the water. And these are the resources that you're spending. You get these tiles right here. You're spending the resources to get these tiles. And there's even more serious ones like here where you, uh, where you want to turn in and convert things. Ultimately, you'll get this thing called a waggle, kind of like a dance here, and then you'll put on resources here so other players or the AI can do this action, and it gives you points. Uh, it gives you these queen track points here as well. But yeah, when you pull this off, you're gonna you're gonna get those those resources. These guys are gonna go up, and then uh, you're also gonna get some queen's favor. These what is it called? Queen's favor points. This is kind of like. It's like a lot of Stonemaier games where they have this little track here and you kind of go as far, as far as you can and score points on here. Of course, the track right here gets a little bit more attractive. Uh, but ultimately, 
There are these different types of tiles. These are your scoring tiles, but you can only put a four on here. Um, but when you ultimately get kicked off, so let's say this worker gets kicked off, they're gonna come back, the AI is gonna come back as a two. And it's also, all this actually depends on the level. There are levels in the game, so you can actually like raise the level of the, the enemy and how far they come back, because they just come back with their workers. Yours go away and you could be down to a one level, one worker here, and you gotta run over here and get the resources and pull them back. But ultimately, if they get kicked out, and this their four, they have a four, Let's say I have a four. I get kicked. I'm going to kick this off. All right. So I got my four. And now I take one of my hibernation tokens and I add them to here. So this is cut off. I have my areas here where I can put a token. I'm going to go ahead and put one here and get this resource here, which is a nice little honey pot. You want the honey pot. You want the honey pot. Okay. Honey pots are great. Okay. They're going to help you with the end game scoring points. So you're trying to also dominate this thing here because if you can dominate this and the AI is going to be trying to do it too better than you and faster than you, which it kind of does have the ability to, and there's even this other spot here, um, they're going to get more points. And this is seven and two, and this is three. But just to kind of give you a rundown, once again, you're going to be taking this card, you flip it over, you're looking at the conditions on the card and comparing it to here. Uh, if this is a zero here, a zero yellow, there are no zero yellows, then I would take this put it over here and take this action. For example, this will take one of these colors and then take these off. Uh, this right here, you'll look at it and it will zigzag according to how it is. If it ever has to place a resource, you'll look at this resource here. So as you can see, very, very, very easy turns. Uh, you're just, you're just kind of back at your turn like that. So let's just go ahead and dig into the review. And I want to start right here with the Ultoma Factory. The Ultoma Factory is worth talking about uh, first. It's fantastic. It's quick. You, you understand how to evaluate the turns. I didn't have a problem with anything other than the squiggly line thing because I was like left to right, right to left. I didn't like that. Maybe I wish they had like a zigzag that was a little bit better maybe. Uh, I wish that icon was a little bit different, but I understood after a while um, the flow of it, but like seeing the color, uh, seeing the, the symbols, very, very easy. Um, you don't really have really any questions with that. The gameplay overall, also very quick. Um, the, the AI puts a lot of pressure on you. It scores a lot of points during the game because if you don't have, let's say you have like this here, if it says zero or one yellow, so now it's gonna score two points, okay? So now it's gonna start scoring points. And this will happen quite a bit in this deck because it only zero or one of yellow based on what we're looking at here. So it's gonna retrieve those, the numbers are gonna go up, and it's gonna have access to these first. So it's really gonna put pressure on you. And eventually it will start winning tiles and putting them over here. And these storing these up, and at the end of the game, they're gonna get a lot of points for having these banked over here. So they'll have something, one point for this, two points for this, and as we get to the higher ones, three points here and seven points for this. As they move around here and they start to explore, they may contribute to this, but they're stripping things away from you, and then they're also scoring points for having those as well. So they have a lot of pressure they're putting on you, and they're taking things away that are essential to you. Yeah, you have your moments, but you're really trying to get bumped so you can do what you need to do, but then you're also bumping them, and that forces them to go you know, uh, get to their higher numbers faster and they're retrieving and they're going up faster. Uh, and also they come back when they get kicked off and they come back, they come back as a two, not a one. So they don't have to build from the bottom. So that's a really interesting thing. You have your different factions. The factions are different enough. I'm not saying they're like, whoa, they're insane, asymmetric, whatever. But it does have that combination of this and that. Uh, so you have your, your boards here and then you also have your, uh, your abilities here. So that, that definitely does give you enough meat on the bone if you're interested in this type of game. I also like the play time. It's about, it's, it's right at that hour. I think if you're really in your head a little bit, maybe it's a little bit longer, but I feel like this is like right at an hour. It's a Euro setup, not longer than five minutes. Definitely quick to play. And I think that's where I want to play this one here. Uh, maybe one, two, or three players. I think that's where I want to stick with it. So my has a thing with getting the five players. I feel like I never want to play a game like this at five players. Just It just don't. Feels like there's too much bumping, and with all that bumping, your workers getting pushed around, I don't want to play with that many people. I'm thinking one to three down. I started playing this solo. I love to play this solo. That's, I, I'm loving this. I'm sharing this with you because I like to play it solo. 
and I'm not sure how much I want to add to my party when I'm playing this, okay? So what do I think about the game? Ultimately, I'm going to give this game, uh, I'm going to say it's an eight. Uh, this game is very, very good. I was going to give it a seven, but I played this for like a whole weekend. And typically I don't play games that many times during a weekend. And I played it a good four or five times during a weekend. And I was just like, I really like this game. And I think, although it has a very high price tag, I'm telling you, games are getting really expensive. I looked this up and I was like, I think they were selling it for like 90 euro at, at Essence. So once again, thank you so much for, for handing this off to me. But I would have I pre-ordered the game if I was that interested. I just wasn't that interested outright. Now, now that I have it, of course, this is very fortunate uh, that I would tell you, hey, I would buy this game with my own money, uh, definitely because uh, this is the type of euros that I look for. This is a very easy to learn euro. It's quick. The rule book makes sense. The Atoma makes sense. It's not that hard to get into. Uh, and that's why I can highly recommend it. Now, the artwork and the theme, uh, that's that's your choice. For me, it's it's okay. It's not like I'm feeling like these thematic bees trying to explain, like uh, colonize or save or whatever it is. I'm not, I'm not feeling that. I feel like there's names of things and those are the names of the things, and there's no theme there uh, other than like <laughs> teach a dance. Well, there's the waggle dance that bees do. All right, so there you go. That's that's it. <laughs> you know, so I don't feel like there's that much going on that's thematic, but I feel like at least you're getting a, a good gameplay experience, and that's why I'm always gameplay over everything, folks. But once again, give this a, a game an eight. It is definitely very a very very solid game. A uh, little bit on the higher tier. And you may have to pay attention for this one for my solo top 10 of the year. I think this one might be in that pool um, for one of the best games that I've played for solo and co-op. And that is my review of Apiary. Hopefully it wasn't too jumbled. There's a lot of stuff going on that I could go through, but I don't want to go too deep. I want you to know more my opinion more than the game, or too much of the game. All right, let's get to my topic of content creators that I appreciate. All right, my closer, my closer topic today. Who are, who are your favorite solo content creators? That's what, we haven't had any questions so far. I, you know, maybe here, here's two of them. We, we want to know how you feel about Stonemaier games. What's your favorite Stonemaier game and why? The important part is why. It's not just listing the game, why? And also, who are your top three solo content creators? I want to know that. You let me know in the comments below. But let me go ahead and get to some of my favorite solo content creators, solo co-op. Hey, I don't know if they like them or not, whatnot. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. I'm going to go with Michael King here, King of Average, the one that I played um, with at uh, Essen. And I'll tell you, controversial. Some people don't like him at all. You know, some people don't like him all. Some days I don't like Michael King, okay? I'm going to tell you right now. Some days I don't like him. I don't like his content. I don't agree with him that day, but most days I find that he is doing some good work. OK, he's doing some good, hard work to find out the truth about some things. And he's sharing his viewpoint on those things. And the games that he likes to show are the games that I like to see. And I really trust his honest opinion on those things. Honest just meaning I like his opinion and his ability to communicate those things to me. And some of the things he does is controversial and I think is whack, but he shifted that and he, he, he morphed a little bit. And I like where he morphed to because it gives me more of a personality of what he's actually like to me, at least. That's how I feel like he is. And when I met him, he's just the warmest person. Uh, so definitely give his channel a look. And if you're not into some of the things that he used to do or you feel like his, he was way off, maybe give him another look. I'll you know, give him a second shot. See how it goes. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, what was it, Board Game Garden? That's Jenna. Yeah. Uh, she does solo stuff and she does really, she's just real nice, gentle, good energy, real relaxed, uh, and, and knows how to present games in a very comfortable way. Uh, good explanations. Uh, she's going to be doing some content, I think, on missions, uh, Marvel X-Men missions. So you definitely want to check that out uh, so you can get a kind of a vibe of what she does. Uh, and, and how she does it. It's real smooth, real chill, covers different games than normal normal people would cover, so you don't necessarily know uh, all the games that you would cover, so that's also really cool too. Not just the popular games. Sometimes I find that I'm covering more popular games, then sometimes I cover such obscure, obscure games that you don't, you don't even know about. You're like, where do we find this game? But I think she's kind of somewhere in the middle. We're like real right in the middle, where she'll introduce some games to you that might be good for your collection. Rob's 
Tabletop. Okay, so Rob's Tabletop, Rob and his wife, I believe it's his wife, they play nice big dice chuck and dungeon crawl games okay big campaign games they have a really steady community they usually play in the middle of the day nice nice good stream about 50 some people and you just they just go through the rules they're very solid on the rules well researched they have a damn good time playing uh, and they take it seriously they take it seriously enough where you feel like you're watching a stream where somebody knows the rules and they're they're cool enough to, to if they are corrected they can they can uh, you know handle that and I love people who can handle being corrected uh, in a professional way and I don't feel like it's just professional I just feel like it's natural they want to get the rules right uh, but that that's another channel I definitely think you should check out now one of the channels I want to talk about they don't necessarily cover solo uh, they cover everything but they cover things that are generally on Kickstarter and the last one is Leisure Games I've been with Leisure Games since he had like 200 subscribers man <laughs> And, I mean, he was doing it on like an old, old, old phone camera or something. I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he was just holding his Z920 up or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Everybody starts somewhere. I had my Galaxy Note 5 in my hand back in the day. Uh, but I watched him back in the day fading out content, just speaking in. But he always spoke from the heart. And he always said exactly what he felt. And that's the thing. I always know that I'm getting exactly how he feels. Sometimes he goes way off the rails. Sometimes I feel like he might be leaning in a little too hard, leaning in a little too hard for maybe for the sake of leaning in too hard, but not really. I, I, I feel like that's exactly how he feels about specific topics. I mean, when you get passionate about something, you're passionate about it. Right. And you should be able to express that on your channel. And I think that's what he does really well. He expresses himself. He's exposed and he's exposed with his truth and he's sharing that with you and I think that's something that I appreciate about him don't rock with him every day don't rock with him every day uh, and uh, you know like in contrast of other people who uh, who cover Kickstarters and they're you know just going through the maybe the business proposition of them uh, maybe they talk about things positively positively all the time he talks about why you shouldn't back these games he will cover the ones he likes but he will also cover the ones and tell you do not back these games think twice don't fall in love with the FOMO I'm trying to make sure you understand that too play what you have stop buying all these crazy games stop backing games and then forgetting about it two years and be like oh my god I forgot to even back that that's actually your fault bad business decision and he is one of those people that will try to talk you off the ledge uh, by the way the people who are not liked, Michael King, who's so honest about things and tries to stop you from being scammed, and the person that is the most forthright about don't back in things, people don't like him. How do you? How does that work, right? <laughs> so, whatever. <laughs> so I try to be the middle ground, I guess. I, I tell you not to back games. I also cover games. So, it, you know, it, it's pick your poison. And lastly, last but not least, Mike, Mike from One Stop Co-op Shop. I should say Liz Davidson, too, is my friend as well. But Mike from One Stop Co-op Shop does a lot of different coverage. By the way, Flame and Fang, his first game is on uh, Kickstarter right now, seeking funding. I believe they just funded. Definitely check it out. But Mike, Mike and, the t and the whole team over there, uh, Jason, Barron, uh, all those people over there, and Colin. I think Colin still with the channel. And they all cover these different types of co-op and solo games. Nice, honest coverage, five-minute reviews. Not like me, I'm long-winded. And uh, they just do a really solid professional job of covering games. And you get what you need. You get nice, tight shots, tighter than the ones I have on here. And uh, they just do a really solid job of covering games in the most, uh, in the most clear and direct way. And I learn a lot from watching them. Uh, and you know, even though. Uh, you know, you, you may think that we're competitors, but we're not. We all come together when we're at these conventions and play games together, and we just talk. You know, we just talk. It's not always about games. It's not always about other content creators and publishers. We just talk, and uh, we really enjoy what we do. And I think all those people I've hung out with, at least, uh, except for Chris from Legion Games, and... Uh, you know, we love what we do, and we just want to bring information to you. And those are some of the people that I think uh, that are worth watching, people that I enjoy. But once again, let me know your top three. Uh, let me know your top three content creators, and also let me know your favorite Stonemeyer games, but also tell me why. It's very important. Why is important. And if you fell out of love with one, tell us why. All right, folks. I think I've taken enough of your time. This is probably the longest episode. I'll try, not to, keep, I'll try to keep them under 30 minutes, but I haven't edited this yet. I'm sure it's long. It's okay. All right, folks, I will be back with some other games. If you have any suggestions for games that you would like covered, new 
older, let me know. I got some I got some old ones back here. I do have old games back here, okay? There are not just new games. The new games are in the front. I always change the games, the new games that I have in the front. My all-timers are back here, okay? Some of my all-timers are back here. You, you can't see them, all right? But I try to add the new games up front. And as you can see over here, it's like sort of new games, sort of not new games. Okay, anyway, whatever, whatever. Just let me know what type of games you want to see. Maybe there's a game that you want to know about and you're just like, man, can somebody cover this game? I don't, you know, I will try to cover it and I will be as honest as possible. Maybe we can do a, an older game and a newer game uh, during an episode and see what, uh, like a hidden gem and a, and a brand new game. Big box game, small game, something like that. Anything is welcome. Just let me know. All right, just let me know. All right, I'm rambling. I should have probably edited this out, but I'm not. You take care. See you next time on Solo Chat. You have a wonderful day.